I'm Adam Manis. And I'm Peter Martin. And you're listening to the You'll Hear It podcast. Jazz Explained. Explained brought to you today by Open Studio. Go to openstudiojazz.com for all of your jazz lesson needs. Hey, Adam. Yeah. What are we talking about? Today, we're talking about how anxiety can ruin your soloing. Now, this comes from... <laughs> personal experience peter i don't know about do you do tell well and then i will do tell it's not just in due time it's not just in the past either this is something that i deal with all the time about getting in your head as you're soloing in fact our dear listeners don't know this but just a few weeks ago i got what's called the yips i had never heard the term so if you don't know what he's talking about let's let's explain it to them go google rick <laughs> and keel who is a Cardinals pitcher who got the yips. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Is that and, the origin of the term? No, no, no. no. It, it came before him. But the yips are something that often happens. Uh, yips. It's, it's neurological. <laughs> I didn't actually have the yips in the sports term. So Rick Ankiel was a pitcher. He couldn't hit the catcher. Like, it got to the point where he couldn't throw. You're not supposed to hit the catcher, are you? No, you're supposed to hit the catcher's mitt exactly. Right. And Oh, it, God. Like, he couldn't mitt. hit home plate. Yeah. And he had to start his whole career over. And it's actually a fascinating story. I can't hit home plate. What are you talking about? That's Well, normal. yeah, but you're not a professional pitcher. You are a professional pianist, as am I. Yes. And a couple of weeks ago, we've been doing these intros, and I we were doing giant steps. Right. And I got the yips. I couldn't, I couldn't like. It's a hard tune. Well, it wasn't that. I played giant steps a million times, but yeah. I couldn't play anything. Like, I couldn't play yeah. any ideas i couldn't follow the changes something was going on in my brain you were all up in your brain i got in my head it yeah. took us like 50 takes to do it we then discovered that the piano sound had gotten off my keyboard was way over in the other side yeah. of the room you're getting it a was, little bit of delay that it was, was really throwing me because what i was playing wasn't happening in real time it was a delay induced yip it was a delay induced it. yip, but it got in my head i couldn't yeah. enjoy myself and and then the anxiety started to kind of snowball and cascade i probably. suck not only that but i suck in front of peter martin and i suck in front of our dear listeners yeah is what was getting in my head and i couldn't get out of it yeah and it happens to the best of us like it's part of performing yeah is dealing with things like performance anxiety yeah of dealing with comparative mind comparing yourself to other people yeah and i thought we've been could... comparing yourself to yourself yeah, at that's a different a problem. time. That's right. Or an idealized version of yourself. I should be this. Why am I not this? I used to be able to do this. Why am I messing this up now? Well, that's part of negative self-talk, yeah. which is a part of this as well. Which We're going to negate that. Well, you <laughs> yes. can't negate it, but you can embrace it. <laughs> okay. And let it happen and Lean then just let it. it go. Right. Yeah. You don't have to, well, not embrace it. You don't want to be like, come on, negative <laughs> self-talk. But you also, you can't actually block it out. You can't say, no, get out of here, never, or whatever. Do I need to text our attorneys for some disclosures before we start? No, not at okay. all. We're we are not doctors about, and we are not neurologists. Who said and we are not, about, we're not prescribing medication okay, here. Good. We're just talking about things that happen to everybody. I get nervous. Legally, I get nervous. <laughs> then you might be a perfect candidate for this episode if you're feeling nervous. This is inducing legal anxiety to me at this time. So let's play a little bit more. Let's play. We were just playing some headhunters because we were watching this cool Herbie video, but let's play a little bit more. And I'm going to, as we play, I'm going to try to vocalize what's going on in my head mm. as the thoughts come. Should we try this? Real that quick? could be anxiety uh, introducing. We'll see. I, I might filter it a little bit because I don't want to be lewd. But what are we going to uh, play? The same thing? Same thing. Let's just okay. do a little bit of the same thing. Okay, that was a good start. Peter thinks I'm weird for even wanting to do this. Quite a play-by-play. -play. Am I doing it too or just you? Playing too much. Just groove, just groove. Played a D natural over that E flat seven. That's probably not cool. That didn't work with the sharp 11. Okay, everybody knows I suck now because I can't trim as good as Oscar Peterson and I played that sharp 11. Oh, what is happening? What is happening to the solo? So this is how it gets spun wow. out. Of the Do you so, really think all that? <laughs> well, I was real time trying to yeah. like project, project what's happening. What could go wrong? Yeah, and it's I believe you know in my head I believe it's a little bit more. Uh, there's not as much direct language, but these are the sort of feeling tones yeah. I'm getting. And this is how you spin out of out of out of hand. Now notice what happened is it very quickly went from things that were happening in the music to things that were happening to my perception of status or my ego, right? Mm. And that's not what's happening in the music. Like, it has nothing to do with the music. It has to do with how I'm being perceived. And this is a very common thing that a lot of people struggle with, yeah. is like you get you play something that's not perfect, and all of a sudden you start to get the negative self-talk going, the anxiety starts to happen. All of a sudden, all of your thoughts aren't about what you're playing at all. They're about how you're being perceived by your fellow musicians or the audience or yourself, like yeah. how you're how you're coming across instead of 
what is actually at hand, which is the moment that's happening in the music. And if you can, if you can notice the self-talk, you can't actually ever, as Kenny uh, Warner, who did a masterclass for us, a mentor Warner. session. Uh, what's that? Warner. Kenny Warner. Okay. Is that what I said? I think so. Yeah. Uh, did a mentor session. He said, you can't actually get rid of that voice, which is true. You can't mm. ever just totally stamp it out. Uh, but we can redirect the conversation back to, we can acknowledge, oh, there's that voice, that negative self-talk, and then redirect the conversation back to what's at hand, where our attention is best served, which is on the music. But is it even about totally getting rid of that voice, or is it about redirecting or even minimizing, or by redirecting over time, it starts to minimize? Like, if the goal is to totally get rid of it, then even if it comes in a little bit, like it's a gradient, isn't it? It is, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So and that can be hopefully encouraging to us because it's not like it's not a hundred percent, but it's not zero percent. And it's never going to be either one of those in reality. It so might feel like a hundred percent. Most people when they start off on this journey of like, well, why am I spinning out on my solo? Like, why am I doing stuff I don't want to be doing? Why do I get nervous? They don't even acknowledge that there's their brain is self-talking them and comparing them to others, comparing themselves to their solo from yesterday, comparing themselves to Bill Evans yeah. or Herbie Hancock. And it's ruining their solo because their attention is not where it should be, which is in the moment mm. on the music, you know, enjoying life that's being presented to you, right? And so at first, you don't even know that that's a thing. Yeah. And then if you can just start working on acknowledging, okay, there's some self-talk happening there. I'm going to get my attention back to the solo. Mm. You're absolutely right. The more that you do that, the more that you just say, oh, there's that self-talk. I don't need to be following that. I need to be following the music. You can train yourself out of that so that just naturally the voice is always going to come up but it's a lot quieter and it's a lot easier to say that's not helpful and i'm not going to follow that yeah and it's always such a thing of like anxiety inducing you know uh situations when we play it's not that different than actually you know to be totally candid and transparent i'm going through right now with this episode and the earlier episode is a little bit of self-talk and doubt because of a negative YouTube comment, not a negative, yeah, a negative yeah, YouTube of course. comment that we got from a recent episode where it got me questioning, like, sort of our, the veracity with how we present things and, you know, oh, should I be careful about what I say, you know, and well, you know, I'll just say the comment was, we did the thing about the Brecker brothers and about yeah, yeah. do jazz, and I think we said that, and I think something that we might have said was misconstrued in that we were saying this is do jazz, not as a negative or not as a positive. And we certainly didn't want it to be an exclusionary thing. Of course. And I think we said something along the lines of like, this is when the ladies leave the room or or this is when our wife leaves the room or whatever. I Meaning, said when this is when my wife has to leave, which is because my wife hates that kind of music. Right. Yeah. And it was just like, this is kind of dude music from that time, from that 80s, early 90s time. And like, but then you realize somebody, and the, the comment was somebody who I think is a regular follower of ours and a friend of the pod and stuff, and it was very, like, they really took offense at this, and I understand it. And, like, so now that's in my head and is giving anxiety as we go through this because I'm like, no, I'm a good person. I want everybody to see that all the time. But then it's like, do I be careful about what I say and have to explain myself? But I'm like, you know, we all who we are. And isn't it the same thing when we play? It's like it's not having this this false sense of confidence as we play, but it's also like believing that we can have fun when we play. We do have something to say and to share and that that's okay. There's going to be some self-doubt, but we can we can kind of push that away or whatever. We're not going to let that become like constant in questioning because we're never going to be able to solve that. And there's always going to be doubting and the hating and the, the doubting or hating that we put on ourselves is is going to usually be the most kind of potentially destructive, right? That's right. And we can't expect people to be like, don't say negative things. Like, we don't get that many negative comments on the YouTube no, channel. And I miss really. a lot of them, you know? Yeah. Um, and and so I don't want to put too much stock into that. But then we we do want to please everybody. And we, we, we don't want to come across who we aren't, who isn't us. And when we're playing, it's like, that starts to become a thing. It's like, no, I do know how to play on giant steps. And yeah. I'm not signed. So I'm not myself, actually. Yeah, I am everybody, good. I can I, play. Yeah. I've done this so many times. I can do it. But, and it's not based upon a false sense of like, oh, no, in reality, you've got a skewed vert, like you have no self-awareness. You're right. actually a, a jerk or you don't know how to play or whatever. I don't think, but it gets you questioning those things, doesn't it? Well, the, the honest answer is sometimes I play great over giant steps and sometimes I don't. And sometimes we are uh, extremely uh, full of light and love. And sometimes we aren't. We're human beings. Right. You know what I mean? And so you and I do this podcast 
thousands of hours of of the podcast yeah. and we are not going to be 100 percent right just like we're going to play thousands of solos in our lives and we're never going to we're not going to play everyone perfectly and great and not everyone's a banger yeah, like but, we but, get the percentage gets better because we get better at at coming from a place of love and light and understanding what that feels like yeah. as opposed to following the ego right and so i'm glad you brought up the do, performing this podcast because that's part of the giant steps for me thing too that intro thing the yips that i got yeah and it's i think it's a lot of people can relate to that is that anytime you are do, putting yourself out there and put, performing anything which is this podcast is a performance right we're yeah. putting it out there it's performance art it's your you're vulnerable it's crafted performance you're art. you're vulnerable to criticism you're vulnerable yeah. to people not liking the way you're doing it or what you're saying right. and so it doesn't like you could police that all day but you're never going to be perfect 100% you're but never going to do you think that the that the anxiety that that can create is like, yeah, we're not going to be perfect with our playing or with this podcast or accurate job. Duke Ellington was born in 1921. No, he wasn't. He was born in, you know, whatever. We're going to make mistakes. But it's harder. And for me, it induces more anxiety when I'm not, like, seen as who I think I really am as a person. Right. Yes, I make mistakes, whatever. But I love our list. I love everybody. I don't, you know, I don't want to make, I certainly, like, the worst thing is to make anybody uncomfortable or, like, why would you do that? That's, well, like, that's not cool. So, yeah. so your your anxiety is based off of your perception, which is uh, an expectation. You have an expectation that uh, you are this kind of person, and that everybody should see you that way. Right. But Peter, that's never going to happen. Just like I have an expectation that I'm going to play giant steps a certain way, <laughs> right. and that's never going to happen 100 percent of the time. Yeah. And this is where, like, working on the internal game as we age usually is what we do. Is like if we can just get rid of those expectations. It's not like then you don't care about other people's feelings or you don't care about playing beautiful music over giant steps. In fact, it's quite the opposite. When you let go of your desire to be perfect yeah. every time you do a podcast or perfect every time you play giant steps, you actually end up being more with the moment, yeah. being more, uh, you know, this coming from a place of of love and less of coming from a place of fear and I want to say the right thing and then inevitably you don't say the right thing or you don't play the right thing because you're too worried about what you're playing. That's what was happening to me. You know, but, I was, but when we're playing, like because of this music, like the way the things that it demands from us to have that intimacy and that immediacy with how we react to the moment, that being the exciting thing and not playing it carefully and not like saying, well, I'm going to play in a way that I'm not going to be exposed as a fraud or to get off beat or have to do a retake. And, you know, there's challenges to this. It's not like a gig where, well, at least on a gig, if you're screwing up, you're going to get to the next course and you're going to move on. We always have the option to be like, oh, let's do another take. And we feel like we're letting each other down, well, but we can do that. And at least the world doesn't see. We're not doing this live. Right. Yeah, exactly. That, that's the other part of this is in my head. One of the things that happens is like, oh, well, you just you just messed that up. And this is going to be on YouTube forever <laughs> right. for everybody to see. Right. And a lot of times this is the first time they hear you play the piano. And it's you messing this but thing is, up. And, and is that the same thing? And it's just like, casually us sitting here just, you know, BSing, doing something casually, right? And it's like everything's got to be in the internet age. Everything's got to be right. perfect. And all of our speech and our ideas have to be pitch perfect and aligned with everybody else or else we, our ego thinks that's it. But is the equivalent of like what you, when you were playing, when you were like, oh, that's a sh when we were just doing the demo and you're like, oh, that's sharp 11. Whoops, that didn't work. Oh, and then... The next kind of thing is like, was it bad enough that we should redo it? Exactly. Was, am I going to be a you know? Live is that the equivalent of like, oh man, this is do jazz? Wait, is that going to hold on? I just said something. Is that going to sound exclusionary to people? Is that I know that's not what I meant, but how is that like? That's that's a tough slope, and I think that's why a lot of the YouTubers and stuff are kind of losing their they have not losing their minds. Sorry, having see like I'm I'm saying it now like, yeah. uh oh, did I just screw somebody up? Totally. But having a mental health challenge. Because when your mind starts thinking and you are putting yourself out there, I mean, look, we could become very like, uh, you know, careful. And we've done that. That's another problem we have. Sometimes we're like, we love everything. The Grammys. We love every single track because we're afraid to offend anybody. I know. And then I because remember we, someone, we don't called wanna... us, someone called us watered down vanilla sexless robots. <laughs> sexless? <laughs> they called us sexless. Well, because <laughs> we were too may or may not be true, but they don't but know But this that. is what I'm saying. You cannot, you cannot, whether we're talking about perform like playing or <laughs> talking or being just being a person right if Wait, you're what is a sex filled ro aren't sexless all, i know but aren't all robots sexless dude i don't <laughs> i don't i don't, I don't pretend to robot? know what youtube commenters are always talking about here i, I don't <laughs> if we again if we went down that road of trying to understand what everybody on the internet is trying to say i think we would be really in a lot of trouble but, but we have but we've gotten comments many of them and that's why i don't like to discount any of them 
like that are so spot on and poignant oh, and, totally. and we're not great about replying, but we see, I see most of them or many of them. And I think that it's such, that's another thing to get in your head. Cause you can be like, Oh, well, they don't know what they're talking about. I'm this, but it's like, Oh, but somebody else said something. They were like, Oh, you guys are so great. You nailed it on the head. Do we pat ourselves on the back? Same thing when you're soloing. Yeah. Woo. Somebody in the audience. Oh, so the sharp 11 does work. I'm going to do it again. Wait, can I not do it again? Because it worked the first time. Or was that person not really listening? Wait, were they saying woo to the drummer? Wait, what's going on? You know, yeah, yeah. like there's a lot that, that you can get in your head about. And, and, and I think I think the key here is to give yourself permission to be honest and be yourself and to learn from when it doesn't work for you, you know? And I'm I'm grateful for the, you know, the experience of having the yips that one day of like not being yeah. able to play. I'm grateful for Wendy's comment. Uh, on our previous video because mm. it's like we all have blind spots that we don't see even yes. how little things that we think are just these off off the cuff moments or whatever right. like affect people right and things that happen in our solo affect us and affect our our ability to perform in a way that is true and honest and in the moment yeah. to speak in the manner that's true and honest in the moment and from a place of love and if we police ourselves too much and we have expectations of i have to be this here Oh, somebody's calling. Somebody's Hi. Calling. Hi. I have to be this here and now. Yeah. Right. Then it's gonna it's gonna muck the whole thing up. The, right. the whole thing is gonna be from a place of fear. And ultimately, even if you're trying to be great, if you're trying to play the perfect thing, mm. if you're coming from a place of fear of not playing the perfect thing, you'll never do it. One, a couple of things I want to talk about that we can just touch on briefly about how again we talked about the for, sort of first step is acknowledging that your attention is on negative self-talk or you're in your head about something, yeah. whether you're performing or, or just living. Yeah. And once you can acknowledge that, you can move on to what's important, which is the music and the moment that's in front of you. We had Aaron Parks in here recording his course, coming soon, by the way. Yeah. And he mentioned some of the things that he uses is, is like feeling his body when he's playing. So like if he gets mm. some negative self-talk happening or, or in his head a little bit, he'll think about, you know, his seat on the bench or his feet on the floor and just yeah. trying to feel those as it's happening, like bringing your body back into the moment. Yeah. First, it seems super remedial and simple, but it's a great way to just connect with what is actually here, which is the sensations of being alive in the, in the time we're in. Right. Instead of here's a story about what I'm trying to say and who I am and it affects this and this lives on forever and all that yeah. stuff. That stuff will just crush you. Yeah. Yeah. When I think all these techniques and tools and and ways like the goal and the end result i think for 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 us for sure with the pod and just us individually with our playing and i would encourage everybody for your artistry you know and we're all art you know putting art and trying to put beautiful things out into the world is like these are all ways to get our message and our true selves and our stories out there in as accurate and as beautiful i mean not accurate like a computer or a sexless robot, but, you know, accurate as in, this is me, the good, the bad, the, the frayed, the incongruent, but Squiggly also... Squiggly lines, buddy. Yeah, man. Yeah. It's like, the, you know, let that out there, give grace to each other, but also give grace to ourselves to be like, you don't have to be falsely confident, I think, to get over this anxiety, but there, if you lower your expectations to that of like, you know, how I can represent myself in the podcast, that I'm having some anxiety you know, to, to be able to, to not be exclusionary for this example, or how do I represent myself so I don't feel just totally befuddled and beaten down by giant steps, something that w many millions of people have gone through, but it's very frustrating when 10 minutes ago you weren't going through it. Like, right. and, and so then all the things that that do, like, how do you Didn't take even know it was a thing? Right. Yeah. Right. How do you take a breath and say, okay, this is a challenge. There is a way to overcome it. Hmm. Overcoming it is not perfection or reversal. But it is like getting through this and becoming stronger at the end and being able to be more helpful and to be a net gain. I mean, like, if we don't get anything negative, we don't ruffle any feathers, then we're just bland and vanilla and nobody cares. Sexless right? robots. But I want to <laughs> I want to say, I want to say though, this is a, also just a game of expectations, right? Yeah. So the biggest my biggest problem with giant steps was I I was expecting myself to always be able to play giant steps perfectly because I have before. Ooh, a little a little giant steps taken for granted there. Take it for granted. Yeah. You're expecting to always just be seen as this, you know, benevolent, perfect person in everybody's right. eyes. And that any sort of difference in your expectation versus how reality is, which is I'll never be able to play giant steps perfectly a hundred percent of the time. You'll never have a hundred percent of the people liking you. Right. I mean, think about this, like people hear John Coltrane and they say, I hate that. 
Right. I don't like that music. This is someone who we consider to be one of the greatest artists of all time. Yes. In the history of recorded music. Yeah. And they're or t- take your pick, Miles Davis or or Stevie Wonder. They're like, yeah, yeah it's not for me. Yeah. You know. So it's like you're never going to be everything to everybody. And once you sort of like see your expectation, what that is, oh, I'm supposed to be perfect for everybody all the time. And then you can say like, well, wait a minute. That's not true. It's not going to happen. Right. I'm going to mess this up eventually. Yeah. It's going to happen. Squiggly lines. It's never yeah. cookie cutter and straight. And you know what? I think the number one um, anxiety reduction technique for us, for both of us, for these two different issues is right now. What? Are you thinking what I'm thinking? What? Gala. That would reduce my anxiety. No pressure. Do what you want, folks. But if you could please. The man's adhere- a marketing genius, <laughs> no, everybody. No, really. That'll make me feel whole again. You wow. know? It's not about me. It's not oh, about so me. it is. But it's no. about external results. No. <laughs> it's, about, it's about external approval, Let's everybody. Say, I just want to put that this, out there. But th- think about it. I wouldn't say this at the beginning. This is for those that want to go deep okay. and have made it all the way to this part of the pod. That's a special breed okay. right there. If you, are, if you made it this far, in the YouTube comments only of this video, I want you to put Gala for Peter's ego. Gala <laughs> no, for Peter's not. ego. No, that the is Gala's a, for... No, Gala's. Gala? 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 It doesn't matter. G-A-L-A. And what does that stand for? So gentle, gentlemen and ladies <laughs> agreement for Peter's ego. No, it's for Peter's anxiety reduction. It's the anxiety reduction act. <laughs> the anxiety. The ARA. Okay, okay. That's the, the Gala AR. anxiety reduction act. That's yeah. what you put. Gala it. ARA, please, A-R-A. please. <laughs> <laughs> Until next time, you'll hear it. 